Hello, Brendan here, back another video. Uh, I wanted to look at um, my WordPress site today. I just got a temp site that I've spun up that has some API data in it. We're gonna take a look at REST API versus WP GraphQL. Uh, if you're not familiar with WP GraphQL, that was a plugin that was just in the past couple of weeks added to the canonical list of WordPress plugins. And GraphQL is a query language uh, that was made, I don't know how many years ago now, um, but it gives you the it gives you the ability to to decide what data you want uh, rather than like a REST API that just gives you everything. Um, and so to demonstrate that, I just have my site here, uh, API temp site. And if I come, I'm just going to go here to Postman and I'm going to run an API request. Now, if you'll remember in some other videos, I've got these paths here, the wp-json slash wp slash v2. That just comes from the WordPress um, the, the default route for uh, the REST API. And so the developer.wordpress.org site has a bunch of resources on uh, how to use this REST API. Uh, but essentially what I'm doing here is I'm going to make a call to this path and I'm choosing to go to, to look at my posts within my WordPress site. So if I send a, a get request, it's going to return all that data. And you can see here, it's returning a bunch of different data. It's got the post ID, the date, it's got the modified date, it's got the slug, the status of the post, what type of post it is, all that stuff. It's got all this data and it returns each of the, all of that for each item. And so the way I can show you that this is, I'm gonna go just take that data and put it in a little JSON viewer I have here. Uh, and so I can see my first 10 posts, right? It starts at zero, goes to nine. And within then uh, I see all this data and you can see there's arrays within it. so. Um, you know, we have, you know, again, we're getting the, all these different pieces of data, but most of these are not really going to be used for the most part. Um, and so there's a lot of sort of superfluous stuff. And when you get, have a bunch of API calls all the time, it's going to, um, you know, can slow down the calls it can slow down your server load. Um, and so the, the next thing that I want to show you is what GraphQL does. And so uh, if I come back to my WordPress site, I have the GraphQL plugin installed here and then I can uh, go in here and edit this. And so I'll just delete this query that's in here. And, um, you know, it's a little, it's a little daunting at first, maybe because it's just a blank screen, right? You're not really sure what to do. There's some great docs over here uh, that you can like look at the, the base, uh, you know, we'll just focus on queries and we're not going to talk about mutations, but um, all the, all the various things in here that you can, Query. So you can query all the settings, you can query categories, category ID. Um, and so this tells you a little bit about what the data uh, structure is and how to work with it. Um, and then the other really nice thing about this that, that they've added, I don't know how long ago, um, but the query composer lets you essentially build a query. And so um, if I open that, I can see I get all my different settings in WordPress um, here uh, with with all the different endpoints that I can hit. And so I can see, I can see my pages, right? So um, if we just, uh, instead of page, let's go to pages. So we get all the pages and I can then see some data within there. And so one thing with GraphQL is you look for nodes. If you want to get data back, um, actually everything in GraphQL uses a, a post request, but whatever. Um, so we, we, we get nodes and then there's nodes that, that contain all our data. So we, we can have author data. Um, let's get the, like, you can see, you can see all this data that's in here. It's, it's a, it's a lot of it, but you, the beauty of this is I can return only what I want. So if I just do like the rendered post title for all my pages, um, I can see here, I've got uh, CMS, ACF block, WS form demo. So those are the pages of my site. And the other nice thing with GraphQL is that you can type in here, right? So I can just say posts and run that query. And that's gonna get all my posts, all my blog posts. So there's uh, the first 10 posts, right? So if I go to my posts here, I'll see those in here. And let's take another look here. We've got an author field, right, in my posts. So let's go back to our GraphQL and let's try and get that, um, that data. Um, so there's, again, there's all these data structures within here, um, but here's the nodes within my posts. I can click on author. I can see all the nodes within the author field. And so I can get, um, I can get like the first name 
of the author. And you can see it's building my query here on the in the middle column. And if I run that again, now we're going to see we get the first name of the author. And so uh, we could round that out with the last name. And let's say I also want to get like the avatar uh, of their image. So let's get the URL of their avatar. And let's run that. And just like that, it's going to give me only the data that I've requested back. Okay, so we've got the title of the post, we've got all the author data. And so in a REST API, you'd have to do multiple calls to first get the authors. Um, because if we come back to my JSON viewer here, uh, right, when I do a, a call to the posts, I, I get the author field, but I just get a, a, an integer value. So I get author uh, two, so it's like the second author. And so if I open up another one of these, right, author two, there's author one, so that's you know me and John Wick are the, are the authors of these posts, but but it's not giving me all that other structured data, and it's giving me a bunch of other data that I don't want or, and don't really want to use. And so the beauty of GraphQL is that I, I can send in these queries that are um, selective, that they only give me what I want. And the, and the other beauty of this is that you know for for some reason you wanted to like have the last name return first. Um, let's delete that and. We'll paste that there. And then the other nice thing about GraphQL, I can prettify this. That'll get rid of all the superfluous spacing. Uh, but if I run this, now it'll have my last name structured above the first name. Um, and so the, the possibilities that you can do with this are, are, are pretty endless. You can basically turn your uh, WordPress site into um, you know, a, a CMS system that you can use on a front end, like uh, in a Node project or, um, or a Next.js project. Um, and you can use that data basically as in any kind of structure you want. Um, so let's also quickly look at, I'm gonna open up the plugins here and I have WP GraphQL for ACF. Uh, and so you can also extend all your, well, secure custom fields. Uh, but let's go, let's go in here and I'll refresh. And now we're gonna be able to access all of the um, ACF fields. So I have some like brewery data in here that I've made. And then I've got my exhibits. And so um, again, we can look at my exhibits. I have, it's actually just the same posts as, as the, that are in the posts, but um, I do have data in here in a ACF custom field. And so I can also um, add to this post query. If I also want to get like exhibits within the same query, I can open up the exhibits and go to the nodes and go down to uh, you know, the title. We'll select the rendered, uh, rendered format and we'll run that query. And again, we're getting the title, um, and then we're we're getting an exhibit here. Uh, let's see, where are my exhibits? No, sorry, exhibits are down below here. All right, so those are all my posts with my author data, and then I'm also getting the uh, exhibits. And I'm and all I'm getting is exactly what I've asked for, which is the title in rendered format. I didn't ask uh, the GraphQL query language for any more data, but again, you can come over and you can. I can say I want the slug. I can say I want, um, you know, like the day it was modified or whatever. So let's refresh that, scroll on down. And just like that, we are getting now just the, exactly the same data we, we, we've uh, asked it for, the title, the slug, and the modified date. And so this works with ACF blocks as well. It works with, um, I think you can get it to work with other custom post types as well, but essentially it is pulling in all that data and you can render what you want. So. Now, what do we do with this data? That, there's the, there's the, the million dollar question. Like, great, so Brendan, you've queried all this. What can you do with it? Um, well, the answer is you can take it into, you know, as I said, you can use any front end framework you want. Uh, in this one, I'm just gonna show you um, a new, fairly new website builder called uh, Web Studio, which is a, it's not on WordPress, it's, um, but it's an open source builder. Uh, that has the capability to ingest GraphQL and REST API data. And so let me just go to my homepage here and I've got, you know, these are my exhibits that are pulled into this site uh, just with gr the GraphQL uh, resource uh, connection here that I have. So what can I do? I can, uh, if I click on the body wrapper here, I can see I have some uh, variables that are connected to like the, the page here. Um, and so I've named this WP posts. And within there, I've just pasted in my GraphQL query, right? That's exactly the same. Well, it's slightly different from when I set it up, but it's it's the same idea where you take that data here 
and you just paste that. You can also, you know, name these queries to, um, you know, uh, blog and uh, exhibits or whatever, whatever, however you want to name it, but that's just going to name it here. Um, but you can just basically copy and paste that data and paste it into the query and it's going to execute this query. And, and I've just add, appended the slash GraphQL to the URL field. Um, that, that's just instead of um, typing in the the routes here, like in REST API, you just need to do GraphQL, and then you're passing in uh, all the all the query data into the query uh, when you make a, a request. All right, so so basically, I've pasted in that query, and then you just take that data and map it and bind it to all the fields that are in my collection. So I've taken that data and made a um, whatever made like a express, you know, expression editor where I've, I've bound that data to this collection. And so then it's going to iterate over each of the items. And so I have all, I think it's like 17 uh, posts in here um, that are pulled in from my WordPress site. And so, you know, you, it, the whole idea of this is to sort of decouple or, or use WordPress as like a headless system where um, the live site is not actually on WordPress, but the data is being rendered from WordPress. Um, and so the way, yeah, the, so the way this works is like you basically just bind all the stuff in here. So if I look at the image and I come to my source, is Im I have the collection item and it's pulling in the featured image node source URL, right? So that uh, this is just like JavaScript notation uh, in the expression editor here. And so um, like if I delete that last one and put a period, I can see like all the data that I'm getting in from that query. And so that matches um, again with what we were looking at here, where we've got like the the slug, the modified date, and um, so it doesn't match exactly right because it's a slightly different query. But um, but that's the idea is that you bind your data uh, into the collection that iterates uh, over all the selected data. And then the way it also is is working, I actually have I so I'm not making individual pages for any of this stuff, but I am going into um, like this expression editor, I'm, I'm concatenating um, the slash blog slash, and then adding that as a static value and then bringing in the dynamic value of the slug, right? So the slug is um, gonna be passed in dynamically depending on each of these posts, okay? And so if I look at my uh, old other pages here and I can look at, here I've got the, very similar one where I'm just um, getting the the blog post data, right? And then I'm passing in this slug into it. So it's a dynamic URL um, being passed into Web Studio to, to really, um, to, so basically I'm creating a CMS functionality in here without actually building any pages, right? So any of those, uh, and I can test that by, uh, you know, changing this to a different um, a different post, right? And so now we're, we're previewing the chromatic currents and you can see we now have a different author, right? We've got John Wick as the author and I can switch this back to, um, to a different one that I wrote or whatever that um, has, you know, my, my particular data. But again, it's the same layout, but it's just different data being passed in to the variables. So, um, that was kind of a, a whirlwind uh, approach to explaining GraphQL. Uh, I know that it's, you know, maybe you don't see the benefit of it or it's a little, maybe it's like, it just seems like, what, what is this useful for me, Brendan? Uh, but, you know, it's just the idea of separating your data, uh, your content from your website and your actual like rendering front end uh, of, for the design and just being able to uh, pass that data in uh, to your various applications. And so the other thing this opens up is like, if you have multiple data sources, let's say I have, you know, all my WordPress posts in here, of course, but what if I have um, a bunch of like, uh, I don't know, like Airtable records that I also want to be able to ingest in? Well, same idea where I could create um, another variable here and choose a, a resource and put my Airtable um, information in here. And so I can then do get requests and pull that data in as well. So I've done that in a couple of these other projects. If you guys are interested, I'll, I'll go over that kind of stuff. But um, essentially, I just wanted to show 
what the what the deal is with GraphQL and and why it's it's such a powerful feature uh, as you go down your uh, development journey in WordPress. So let me know what you think. Let me know uh, if this is if you're interested in this kind of content, if you find it useful or whatever. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer questions or get some ideas from you guys of like what kind of other stuff I should build. So I don't know. This this to me was like when you first discover custom post types, it's like opens up a whole uh, new realm of possibilities in terms of what you can build. So um, yeah, I look forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks.